Saddam's destroyed and defiled face symbolically rises up into Baghdad's hot sky. The fallen dictator's enormous capacity for terror and cruelty is only slowly coming to light. At these gallows, thousands of Iraqis were executed on the instruction of Saddam Hussein. Saad Abdul Amir was one of Baghdad's hangmen. For 12 years, he served the regime as an executor. Thousands of people were sentenced to hang by his hands. I learned how you have to position the noose around the neck. At the front, directly on the larynx, it cuts off the breathing. In the back, you have to put it on a vertebrae, then the neck breaks. I had assistants who helped me to tug on the condemned men's rope several times to speed up the death. Abu Ghraib is Iraq's largest prison. This is where criminals under Saddam were sent to die. The once overfilled death cells now stand empty. Between the cells is the corridor, along which the condemned would make their final walk to the gallows. There are two nooses next to each other here. Victims were often hanged together. Think now, back, um, and you see your hand. Um, can you can you work with your head that you have killed in the name of Saddam Hussein? So many people. It was a terrible job being Saddam Hussein's executioner. It was my obligation to carry out the death sentences to those the state wanted to execute. I had to make money to feed myself. My only comfort was that I also had to hang genuine big criminals. But I know that most of the political prisoners who were killed by my hands were innocent. In front of the building of a new organisation created to assist in the release of political prisoners, hundreds of people are waiting to find out what happened to their missing relatives. Lists of the dead hang on the walls of a former Secret Service officer's house. Such lists are only now being dredged up from secret police archives. They give details of the day and years these people were executed. Nobody ever informed the relatives. Only now are they finding out the fate of their loved ones. <laughs> Saddam Hussein and his party used to condemn political prisoners to death. The public prosecutor used to come and watch the executions on behalf of Saddam. For me, it was painful to have to listen to the last words of the condemned men before I put the cord around their neck and released the trapdoor. Their voices used to haunt me in my dreams at night. They still haunt me. This is where political prisoners were held. Up to 80 people were caged in these five square meter cells, many of them waiting for the death sentence. In these so-called correction cells, Several prisoners at a time were often made to spend up to two weeks standing up. One of the typically sadistic punishments dreamt up by Saddam's eldest son, Uday. At precisely this point, close to the death chambers, were the death cells. The men who were going to be executed were moved here. Their last meal was passed through under the door and they waited for me. The hangman's assistant would walk the offender up this ramp to the gallows. Those awaiting death would have a sack put over their head and the noose would be slipped around the neck. I always had a lot to do in Abu Ghraib prison. There were political prisoners, criminals, but also women that I had to hang. I would be handed a piece of paper with Saddam Hussein's personal signature on it. A sign would always hang there. May Allah assist the condemned. Hangings happened on Wednesdays and Sundays right after sunset. 
العفو كل احد واربعاء بعد صلاه المغرب The dictator also mocked the condemns for murals on their way to die. Hey, this is the first one. This is of course an attitude that is not allowed. We always used to have a drink before work, only so we could numb our feelings. Sometimes we even got illegal tranquilizers sneaked to us by the attendants. We used to go fairly carefree to the gallows. I would turn the condemned upside down and put a bag over his head before I started. After hanging, the dead were taken to a refrigerating chamber. Normal criminals were handed back to the families. Political prisoners, however, were just slung into a mass grave. The organs were removed for study by medical students. These are the mass graves at Abu Ghraib prison. Such pits were dug over and over again. Saddam's former executioner Saad has other worries. He might be unemployed, but wouldn't like to see the old regime back. Hey, now. Some of the condemned were brought to the execution place directly by the Secret Service. They were tortured there for several days, but they still had to swear allegiance to Saddam Hussein. They would scream wildly before the secret police silenced them with hits from their sticks to the back. You could scarcely recognize their faces, they were so swollen. And I often heard bones break. <laughs> How many people were hung here can only be guessed at. More than 600,000 Iraqis were killed while Hussein was in power, many of them here at Abu Ghraib. I thank Allah that I do not have to do this job anymore. I suffer so much from the burden now on me because I killed so many people, even if it was on instruction. I pray now daily to God to forgive me for what I have done. I want to find peace and I hope Allah hears me. The hangman of Baghdad hopes that soon his country will be free of the blood his hands helped to wring. <laughs>